This is my van life story. And that's me, trying to get dressed in a home that's only 4 feet tall when I am 5 foot 11. I can't stand. I gotta bend over when I get up. A lot of times when I get dressed, I just lie down in bed and just kind of shimmy my clothes on and do the best that I can. And sometimes in my van, if I feel like I want to stand, I got to get on my knees because that's the closest to standing I'm ever going to get in my low roof van. Oh man, looks like another beautiful day out there this morning. Putting on some fresh clothes. Yesterday's clothes smell like campfire and they're covered in mud. I'm not really sure putting on clean clothes was a good idea anyway because <laughs> chances are it's going to get covered in mud on the way out of here today too. There was definitely a bit of a transition period going from living in my condo to accepting all the things that I now have to do in my tiny little van home, like shaving in my kitchen. But no matter what you had to sacrifice, waking up to views like this make every little thing you sacrifice in that small space so, so worth it. That's a mud puddle. That's the puddle we drove in on. And how beautiful of a morning is that? From the puddle. We are starting today's video from high in the mountains here in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, where every mountain is the same height. And according to reading your comments on the last video, they're all the same height because of the glaciers many years ago. That's over the mud puddle this morning. <laughs> That's the puddle we gotta drive out on. It's four o'clock in the morning and wow, what a day. I'm just making some coffee and I'm gonna go look at this sunrise over the cliff over there. I'm not sure if it's gonna be any better than the one over the puddle because that was freaking dope this morning. Aren't these dogwood flowers? Normally I'm used to seeing a flower like this on like the dogwood tree. I might be totally wrong though. I like those. Cruzy, that squirrel's taunting you, bro. Cruzy. There's a squirrel over a couple of them. They're taunting you, Cruzy. You don't care? It's too early for that stuff? What you got there? I come bearing gifts. Oh, that's a good gift, my friend. Half of an apple crumble. Man, oh, this is gonna be a good breakfast, buddy. Yeah, man. Thank you. It's all for you. <laughs> I got strawberry rhubarb if you wanna switch it up. No, this is good, man. Cool, man. When someone comes by and gives you half a pie, it's gonna be hard to try to eat healthy and have oatmeal for breakfast when you have an apple crumble that just like, it's dying to be eaten. Well, I ate the whole thing. I seriously smashed that entire thing. I rammed it down my throat so fast it was dripping off of my fingers and that apple crumble was so damn good. But I do struggle with eating healthy on the road. That's why in the first stack of years of my van life, you guys watch me slowly gain a bit more weight every year. I've definitely cleaned that up now. I've stayed away from the drive throughs and things are doing okay but I have a hard time resisting sugar. I'm addicted to butter tarts lately, and if someone's gonna give me a half a pie or a whole pie, <laughs> you damn right, I'm gonna eat the whole thing. All right, we're all just packing up here. We're gonna hit the trail this morning. Kind of excited to go back through those puddles. <laughs> and man, my van. Look at the floor in here. It is so dirty. <laughs> all right, good to go. Hey buddy, Cruzy, this was pretty messy in here, bro. You ready to go, Chris? Yeah, you ready to go? You ready to rock and roll. Good morning. Good morning. 
All right, we're about to navigate the big puddle. It's always fun to follow somebody through tricky sections on the trail because you can see the path that they take and learn their mistakes and maybe not take that route on your own. These puddles were a ton of fun. Doing those little challenging sections just gets my heart going and I absolutely love it. Uh, Emmy got in a bit of a, a bit of a sticky situation back there. She had to back up a little bit, but uh, all in all, good to go. It's crazy how capable a regular height van is. Her van's done very well. Was really awesome over the last few videos to hang out with a couple of other YouTubers and hear their stories and just kind of experience nature together. It's been a lot of fun. If you missed the last few, go back and watch those videos. And posing for thumbnails and getting the right thumbnail for the videos is always key. You never know, this might be the thumbnail for this video. Gas prices are $2.17 per liter. Let's see how much it cost to make the last video that went up on my channel in fuel. One day. $61. For one day of filming? Yep. Me and Amy are finding that uh, I am going through at least 30% more fuel than her. Uh, lifted vehicle, bigger tires, and a lot more stuff on my van than her van. Um, I think my van weighs about a thousand pounds more than her. But yeah, just so you guys know how much it costs us to make one video's worth of one video worth of driving. Cost me sixty-eight dollars and forty-seven cents to make the last video you guys watched just in fuel. Bye bye, Kate Breton. Bye bye. Blinker on. Blinker on. Please tell me we're gonna go have a shower. Take a look. Yeah, clean, clean the van a little bit. It actually looks not that bad, but this needs to go up here. DJ C Styles, what up, buddy? Yo, Mr. Chrome, how's it going, brother? Good, man. How you doing? A little bit uh, jealous that you're uh, hanging out in Cape Cape Breton. <laughs> <laughs> Spicy sausage, rice, broccolinis, or how, you, how do you pronounce these yeah, things? There's a broccolini, so is that like Italian? The broccolini. The broccolini. <laughs> this is the smallest little baby Pepsi I ever did see. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Going into the back of the truck stop here, they got laundry for one dollar. Serious, just a dollar. Good morning. This fancy machine. It grinds it, it makes it, it puts it in my cup. At a truck stop. How fancy is that? Still working. Okay, we gotta go back inside. Are you waking up to join the party? Good morning, Cruz. Nice to see you awake. <laughs> Cruz, he has a tendency of sleeping in. He's got, he's got the good life. You got the good life, don't you, buddy? I got Cruzy a new little teddy bear. It's a little campfire. How cute is this little campfire? It crackles like a fire. It's got a squeezy in there too somewhere. <laughs> Seen it at the pet store the other day. And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, he's got to have that. So cute. Hey, you like your little campfire? It's cute, isn't it? Well, knocked over the fire, buddy. <laughs> Cruz, you get my bed all dirty, bro. After spending time out there in the bush and getting exposed to that many bugs the other day, I went on and bought myself multiple more cans of bug spray. So, that's the only one left we have from the other day. I stopped and picked up two more. These aren't as harsh as the other ones, the family care ones, but they smell a lot better than the nasty stuff. But did this stuff work? Not really. I don't know if it really worked. I just kind of sprayed it on there and fingers crossed the bugs were just relentless. Then I stopped at the dollar store and bought myself more mosquito repellent coils. 
I don't find that there's a difference between the dollar store ones for three bucks or buy the actual off-brand coils for seven dollars at the store out here for one pack of the off ones. Um, I find, I don't know if it's the ingredient in these that makes them work or if it's just the fact there is smoke and the smoke I think keeps the bugs away and these, if you light them in multiple different spots, not just one end of the coil, break them up and light a bunch of them, um, the more smoke, the better. So anyway, I picked up some more of these because I find they actually do help out there. Where I'm from on the West Coast, we don't have the bugs like they have out here. It was brutal. Um, I've really lucked out on a lot of my travels and I've missed bug season in a lot of places where I think out here, depending on where we are, we may have more days like we had up in the mountains uh, yesterday and also this morning. So um, the bug screens are probably gonna be on my side doors a lot more often and probably a nice big stack of those coils to try to help out. It doesn't make a difference, I don't think. And I discovered that big ants fly and then they take the wings off and then they crawl around on the ground. I didn't even know that was a thing. I was finding those ants in my van all day yesterday. When we were out of the bush, these ants must have just got, flew in here and stayed somewhere and then just, they were crawling around. Gross. I'm not a guy that very much enjoys bugs at all. I just do the best I can to be prepared. So maybe a little bug spray, a little bit of those coils and some screens. I still can't find my bug screens that go on my back door. I don't know where they are. They're not in my van anywhere because I fully gutted my van out before we left on this trip, so I don't know. It's not in the shop. I think I must have left them somewhere at a camp spot at some time on my travels last year. But I have the bug screens that go on this door, but having them on the back door is great because then I can leave both of my doors open on a hot day and the bugs can't get in and sucks now because anytime I open up my fridge in the back, because I have to access my fridge from the back door, it lets everything inside of the van while I'm grabbing beer <laughs> or something like that. So I may have to um, take a look at uh, getting new bug screens for the back door or, or, or just, I don't know, flip my fridge around in the summer so I can access it from the inside. And I do have that option. I just don't like crawling across my bed to get to the fridge. I prefer the back door access over there. It's just a lot more convenient. And I enjoy getting outside and walking around. Just not in the bugs. Okay, <laughs> here's a dilemma. Anyway, it felt really, really awesome to have a tour out here by a local, which is great. Someone who knows the area. And I haven't had that opportunity very often um, where I've taken up the chance to go out with a local up there and show me an absolute epic spot. It was a dusty drive in there, probably 40 minutes on a super dusty road, but the end destination was completely and absolutely epic. And um, Jeremy, thank you so much for inviting us out. Jeremy's girlfriend, Katrina, is that the name? I'm horrible with names. Uh, you guys will probably correct me because she said it <laughs> in a video yesterday. <laughs> Uh, just just good people, good company, and I want to thank you guys for inviting us out. If you ever see me out there running around this planet in my van and I'm outside, come by and say hi. We meet subscribers all the time, and I love the chance to shake your guys' hand and hear your stories. It means a lot to me, and believe it or not, it helps me out a lot on the creative side to meet the real people that are on the opposite side of my camera lens. It seriously helps out to know who I'm actually talking to and makes these videos a lot more fun to create. So come by and meet us and realize we're the same people off camera as we are on camera. Thanks for watching you guys and I'll see you maybe tomorrow. See you soon.